Hey, yo, what's up, man? It's your nigga, man, the P.O.K., a.k.a. Lloyd Banks. You know I'm tuning in, locked in, the real talk in the box. You heard? I'm fresh, I'm fly, I'm so damn high. More than 500 horses when I roll by. Oh, man, the new album is called HFM2, The Hunger for More Part 2. They can expect that in stores November 23rd. And did you feel that people started to sleep on you and then counted you out for a moment, for a while then? I think that, uh, yeah, some people did. I think that, you know, my, my core following, um, meant maybe at times might even question me, you know. Um, what you go through as a, you know, as, as a person, you know, when you're, when you're outside of music, you know, can have an effect on how much you participate in the business. So, I think that, um, you can't expect people to understand why you're not there, you know. It's like if somebody, if you had an NBA star who just like sat out the season or he was going golfing, you'd be like, why are you even playing ball when you still can do it? I think, I think that that's when you get talked about more is when you, when they know you have the capabilities, you know. If, if you were just washed up and done with, I don't think nobody would care or talk about it. So I think that, um, I think a lot of the energy that comes like that, the negative energy comes from the success that we did have, you know, as a unit, you know. Um, there's a lot of artists out there who maintain consistency of just being good enough. You know, good enough to be the underdog. Um, underdogs don't usually have hate. You know, so, I mean, when you start getting hate, that means you're usually heading in a good direction. So during your time away, were you still making music? I never stopped making music. Uh, I um, built a studio on my own. Uh, a couple places I had a studio in a condo also in the city. So. I made that choice for my own personal reasons. It wasn't even just, it wasn't like I was doing anything that hasn't been done before. I just have a love for the music to where I do it when I'm not um, obligated to. You know, I always felt like to have more than enough, you know, it, it, it's better than not have enough, you know. Um, you never know what can happen. Even Benson Bentley, one record, you know, changed everybody's mind. and. Got the labels back talking around and you know negotiating a new situation. Ricky colored vanilla and cherry, and dready your Pirelli, make a movie out the getty. With my ring and my confetti, I'm Kobe Bryant ready. Pink rose ain't chronic smelly while I'm stumbling out the telly. I'm so fly, I'm so fairy in the way I'm so You know, eventually brought the EMI deal, and um, you have to be ready. You know, you have to have the records there because you might not have the time to wait. It's like if I wait till next year you know, the energy from that record would be gone and you would have to recreate a whole new energy. So I had to um, definitely step up to the plate with the rest of the, the bulk of the album. I was I was putting music out on a, on a mixtape level. I put out five mixtapes from September to September, um, the Five Embedded series, and, and I, I just felt the, the momentum. Like when I dropped the first one, uh, it would have um, a certain amount of downloads and then I dropped Halloween Havoc and had more downloads and then everyone I did just got a bigger reception to the point where um, V5 came out and then it led into Beam Events and Vanity. So like each mixtape I started seeing people change. You know, um, I would pay attention to it to the point where I would see certain bloggers like and watch their opinions change. Like, well, you know what, I, I slept on them on that one, but this one is killing it and I think consistency is the key. You know, um, the internet is like whoever's there the most is, is dominating. You know, because it's not like TV. You know, on TV, you don't have a choice. You gotta watch whatever's on the countdown. You know, when you're in front of the computer, you can click on. So if you if you have material out there, you know, on an every day, every other day basis, you know, eventually somebody's gonna click on. L Banks, baby baller of the year. Got about nine, ten dimes, and all of them is here. It don't matter, cause before the night is done, I disappeared. So my new one, I'm leaving out of the side. Meet me there. Oh, yeah. yeah, weed models everywhere. Uh, Metal full of hollows, I don't mind a petty stare. Uh, I don't need a favor, baby, I'm a millionaire. Got a show hopping out of the lair. What do you think of your fans are so loyal to you and always making them material? I think that, um, well, for one, I think G-Unit connected to, to the people so um, tight because. I mean, the pieces we had, like just the friendship we had, you know, as far as me, Yale, and 50, um, I think that we, we appeared like regular dudes to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like it was easy to be us, it was easy to have bad luck, you know, and, and then we, um, the luck eventually changed for us, you know, made things went good for us. I think that 
that success story alone is what people draw people to us. And I think that me um, being in what you, somewhat of an underdog position, you know, just from being, you know, with 50 Cent, you know, keeps me, it kept me humble over time. You know what I mean? At the same time, I'm not content. Like, I want to keep getting better and better and better. You know, everybody's career doesn't start at the same time. You know, um, I think you appreciate it more if you gradually get that. You know. So how did the eventually come around? Did you expect it to blow up like a boat? Um, yeah, actually I did. You know, I was, you know, one of the only people to, to believe that strongly in the record. Um, I just thought it was going to be big. You know? um, and then with the extension of Joel Santana, it just turned it into you know, even brighter, bigger record. And um, I think there was a lot of different things that made that record go. Um, for one, I think it was the mixtape material that I put out. It, it kept all my my core fan base satisfied. So when I came back to mainstream radio, it wouldn't look like I just was on vacation and then just came back. You know, people might not be as receptive to it. I wanted to, to give them all the punchlines and, and the hardcore mixtape material. So. When they hear me on the radio, when they hear me in the club, and, and, a, and a lighter note, they wouldn't feel like they've been cheated. And um, I think consistency, man, just me working, man, and um, staying humble and just wanting to get better. Like I don't think it's been a day going by, you know, in the last eight, nine years that I've been um, doing this professionally that I haven't wrote something, some kind of rap, you know. Um, and I think that that's what I owe it to, practicing, man, just you going in there and, and, and um, perfecting my craft. So who are some of the features on the album and producers you work with? I got um, on a production tip, I got a lot of new production. I got a kid named Cardiac. He's dope. You know, he's done work for me and for the uh, uh, young Seth. Um, um, Buddha the Future, uh, Nonsense, Nick Speed. Um, uh, man, there's so many. Uh, Justice League. And, and some names that's so new, I still can't even, you know, clinch on to it. But on the feature tip, I got on, um, of course, Fifties on the project, and course Tony Yale's on the project. Um, I got Nipsey Hussle on, on um, Nipsey Hussle on the project out the west. Um, he's dope. He has a new flavor to, to what I'm trying to do. Um, just got off the phone with Style, so hopefully we can get that on deck before the deadline. This is the process, you know, right, right now I've got a, a, about a week and a half to, to lock in all the features that I, I want, um, that I can make happen within the timeline. And, um, you know, whoever I can't connect with on this album, then, you know, hopefully I'll get them on the next one.